and the deliberations uh, and insights of deputies on this issue. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Bruin. Thanks, Kerr uh, Herlock. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, get an opportunity to speak on the Reform of Judicial Appointments Procedures Bill 2013 uh, today, and I want to congratulate uh, Deputy McLaughlin for tremendous work he's uh, put in in this area and for bringing before us uh, these very important proposals uh, to finally democratise our, our judiciary. Because I think it's fair to say, Kerr Herlock, that uh, the public uh, are deeply and profoundly unhappy uh, with the uh, political appointment nature of, of, um, of judges um, and uh, the received, um, if you like, a selection of judges from a very tiny elite of Irish society um, and, and where there seems to be a uh, coherent look uh, when you look at the records of the courts. Uh, one law for the wealthy, one law for the rich. Uh, some people uh, apparently um, um, having committed uh, perhaps uh, what most constituents will consider very major crimes, uh, virtually uh, walking scot-free and then others um, uh, receiving very lengthy sentences, for example, for stealing a boy's or a coat or whatever. Uh, so there is grave, grave disquiet. In the first instance, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the work of the, the outgoing uh, Minister for Justice uh, and Equality, uh, Alan Shatter. Uh, I, I thought he was right to resign, absolutely right to resign, uh, but um, his efforts to reform the legal system um, and uh, this, the establishment of the consultation process, I think, was, was a very valuable uh, initiative. Unfortunately, the, the pace of reform has been very slow. We're, we're waiting and waiting and waiting, Minister, for the legal service to regulation uh, uh, bill uh, uh, processes and uh, I think again there's grave public disquiet uh, in, in that whole area. Uh, um, obviously throughout the, uh, throughout the democratic world there are different systems uh, of, of appointing judges uh, uh, like ourselves, uh, other, many countries use the political institutions, uh, we, we also have um, appointments by the judiciary itself in, in some countries, uh, we have the uh, judicial uh, council system and uh, Deputy McLaughlin has referred to the Judicial Appointments Com Commission uh, in, the, uh, in England and Wales as being, um, um, uh, if you like, uh, a template uh, which we could emulate, where there's uh, perhaps um, uh, up to seven, if you include a lay magistrate, seven um, lay people on the uh, nine-person commission, uh, and, and I think it's five, is it five judges um, on, on that commission as well. So there are a variety, a variety of models, uh, and of course, most interestingly, for, uh, interestingly uh, for many people, of course, is the fact that there is the electoral system uh, in, in, in uh, states in the United States, uh, even up to Supreme Court and state, uh, you can run for election to be a judge. And, and that was a reform that was brought forward, I think, in the 19th century uh, to try again and, res uh, and, and get judges who are more representative of the, of the society. Um, so I think, uh, like yourself, probably, Cahirla, I've been concerned over the years of the lack of transparency in the area of judicial appointments. Um, and uh, while the enactment of the Courts and Court Officers Act 1995, uh, when we were both uh, in fact, uh, together in this House, it did address some concerns about the political uh, nature of many judicial uh, appointments. Most people didn't uh, feel it didn't create the kind of um, uh, transparency that we need. Um, and we, we are familiar, I think, with looking uh, as, as ordinary citizens at the, uh, at the court records of, of the performance of judges. You and I, Cahir, look, were, uh, for example, um, uh, closely observing uh, um, uh, Judge Nicholas Kearns in relation to the Priory Hall debacle um, and uh, what, what was a, a magistrate. I think, um, um, performance uh, of, of uh, the, the delivery of, of, of law and of justice uh, by, by Judge Kearns. And then on the other side of the scale, uh, I've been exasperated uh, over recent years uh, in a situation whereby uh, so, uh, some district judges around the country uh, will not obey the will of this House. Uh, I, I shouldn't say that. They will not ensure that the will of this House is carried out in relation to the road traffic acts of 2010 and 2011. Um, instead of a point, you know, ensuring that errant drivers uh, get their penalty points, um, um, uh, they have allowed people to escape uh, or to, or to uh, go back to the old common law function of the poor box, uh, which is unacceptable. It's not the will of the people, as we have expressed it here, in relation to, to uh, tightening up um, um, uh, tra traffic um, uh, regulations and, and uh, law. Um, so I think in so many respects, uh, people are deeply unhappy uh, that we still have an outrageous
procedure system of uh, political appointment of uh, the uh, judges in this country, and it's something we need to uh, get away from. Uh, and uh, as Deputy McLaughlin has said, the senior judiciary themselves feel uh, that we need an independent, a, a, an independent, transparent system where we get the best people, uh, the best legal minds uh, 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 for the job. Um, and um, uh, obviously, the, uh, the uh, judges are appointed uh, in Article 35.1, on the, uh, and the role of the president uh, will remain in, in wh whatever reforms we have in relation to uh, judicial appointments. Uh, but obviously, the, the manner in which uh, the um, uh, a new commission would operate, or, or, or the, the manner in which uh, has been set out here in this bill, uh, would be, I think, a much more um, representative and democratic uh, system. And that's what the public want. Uh, for example, uh, one of the issues um, that has been raised over, over the years um, in, in relation to uh, in relation to the appointment of judges uh, is the, the you know the, the the necessity to consider I think um, the appointments uh, from leading members of, uh, of the legal academic community from the universities that we've some uh, outstanding legal minds uh, throughout our seven universities and our senior colleges and um, uh, I think it would be right uh, that those uh, distinguished um, uh, uh, lawyers would, 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 uh, and teachers would have the opportunity to serve on the, on the bench. I think that would be a very urgent form and uh, I know that the Minister agrees with me in, in relation to that. Um, uh, I, I, I made a submission myself uh, to, the, um, uh, to the consultation process um, and one of the issues I considered, I would have went for, further I think than Deputy McLaughlin in that, I, I think lay members of a, a Judicial Appointments Commission, uh, perhaps there could be scope for electing them. Uh, for, uh, for if there were, um, like the UK system, a half a dozen members or whatever, that, that they themselves could be elected uh, with the rest of us uh, at general election time or at local election, European election time, so that, again, people of great interest in the law and following legal matters and perhaps, um, you know, senior solicitors or barristers or whatever, um, but who don't themselves want to be judges, but that they would have an input on our behalf. Uh, so I would ask the Minister maybe to look at if there's some way in which uh, direct uh, democratic accountability could be brought into the process. Um, uh, in my own co uh, contribution to the uh, to, the, um, uh, so, uh, to the consultation, uh, I, I very much echo the comments of uh, or the uh, um, uh, legal um, uh, uh, st uh, um, the legal formulations, I'd say, of uh, Deputy McLaughlin here in relation to non-discrimination, uh, Section 4, Diversity in Judiciary 5, and uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, the, the rest of the bill as well. Um, uh, as I said, it's critical, uh, look that all sections of society uh, would, be, would be represented. Um, for example, the, the issue of gender equality uh, in the judiciary, particularly in the upper echelons, uh, remains a matter of concern, Minister. Uh, I, know, I know two most recent um, appointments to the Supreme Court uh, were female, uh, but, but perhaps we should frankly have um, um, you know, a, a, a quota that ensures that ideally, like in the political world we're aiming, uh, and I think the Labour Party, uh, I have to say, has had a, a great tradition in that regard going back decades and decades, uh, whereby um, we, uh, you know, uh, there were, the, it was uh, it was the general uh, uh, principle to try and bring forward 50% men, 50% women, uh, but certainly to, a to aim at uh, that uh, neither gender would have less than 40% would be something. Um, also, the growing diversity of the population in terms of ethnic origin. Oh, uh, people might say, uh, the, the, uh, particularly the arrival of the new Irish in the last decade and so on and so forth, and people who have uh, um, um, coming from those communities who might be training in law, uh, that um, it's sort of early days yet, but I think I think there is, uh, again, a requirement both in either through uh, uh, um, Deputy McLaughlin's bill or whatever template, hopefully based on it, that the government might employ, uh, that we would have um, more accountability to, uh, to uh, reflect the growing diversity of our uh, society. Um, uh, and uh, as, as I said, so I'd like to say uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, my um, strong support for um, major reform uh, in the area of judicial appointments. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I think it would be good to, learn, to uh, receive the report of the consultation.
imminent, uh, you know, how, how soon will we know? Because uh, obviously it will be uh, interesting to read uh, the contributions of the different parties and different members of this House uh, and other people uh, and uh, people in the legal profession and how they see this reform. Uh, but it is, it is a very important bill. Um, and again, I, I commend Deputy McLaughlin. Um, uh, there, there is no more, uh, or, or one of the fundamental principles of a free society uh, is obviously a, an independent judiciary, uh, independently, uh, transparently um, appointed. Uh, the Minister has said, in fact, uh, that, that um, uh, you quoted from, uh, from uh, a review that uh, puts us at, at second on the planet in terms of uh, judicial independence. Uh, but uh, again, I think the ordinary citizen feels that um, the, the uh, perceived political nature of appointments is an outrage uh, and should end, and we should have independence in this area. And if, if it's possible, in fact, to have the electoral, to have the people themselves having a say, at least for the Commission or the Council, uh, I think we should consider that as well. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Deputy.